It's about continuity and really the young people and families are, are really what this is about. A deal is done. Dr. Sonia Sanalisis will lead Baltimore City Schools for at least one more year. This morning, we sit down with the City School CEO about her plans for the future of City Schools. And later, the sights and sounds of Fleet Week. There's still time to catch the excitement around the Inner Harbor, what it means for the City of Baltimore to anchor this big event. Hi everyone, I'm Jason Newton. Welcome to 11 TV Hill. School is officially out for Baltimore City Schools and their students. The same week, the district hosted its final day of classes and the school board made a really big announcement. Dr. Sonia Sanalisis will stay on as City School CEO for at least one more year. This makes her one of the longest serving CEOs in Baltimore City School history and she joins us now here in studio good to see you always good to see you Jason. how how tense of a negotiation was this to get to this <laughs> oh point God. well you know i kept looking at the calendar right yeah. June 30 and you know some of this you expect but i am just glad we are where we are um so that you know families can breathe a sigh of relief staff the general community you know i had neighbors yeah. uh, some of my neighbors say we're so glad, right? It's over. <laughs> so it's just, it, it's great. People can go into the summer knowing we'll start school well, that kind of thing. We so talked good. We talked the other night, and I think for some people, if you didn't see the interview, when they see one year, some people start to make assumptions about that. Sure. What are your sure. feelings about it being a one-year contract? And did you want one that was longer? Yeah, I mean, you know, I know urban school systems. Sure. And um, I know them at a national level and clearly intimately here in Baltimore City. And so for me, I know what the runway needs to look like. Like. Sure. Um, but I'm I'm happy with the year and it's you know it's the board's decision and I you know respect roles this is their job that's what they're charged to do yeah. and I'm just glad that we're not throwing a system into chaos uh, waiting until June 30 so I'm pleased I'm curious how you stomach some of the comments have come out and, and, and you know maybe it's just part of the job BTU sure. is saying that they welcome uh, the way that you've confronted challenges over the years unprecedented stability but at the same time they talk about chaos and surprises and say that they want to do a national search does that does that do anything to you or do you just do your job oh no you do your job and you know this, Jason, I have three teenagers and a husband at home who remind me what life is really about. And, but, but it is about digging in. We sure. have 10,000 employees in Baltimore City Schools who come every day to do what's best for young people. And, you know, I recognize other organizations, our BTU partners, um, you know, they have their frame on the work too. So, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not bothered or ruffled by that at all. Tell me about successes uh, just for this year alone. It seems like schools have gone through a lot. Absenteeism was something that you were hoping to, yes. to maybe take a chunk out of. Were you able to do that? We really were. We are so excited by the um, about a 9% a decrease in chronic absenteeism and you know chronic absenteeism is those students that are not in school 20 days or more. We saw um, really uh, an increase in attendance. Our schools, school leaders really took that on. Yeah. Um, we're really excited about our KRA results. Yes, the state shifted tests, yeah. um, but our uh, pre-K students that come through our city schools programming um, are some of the best prepared in the state. So we're very pleased about that. Um, and we've got some early indications that our literacy work is going more deep and I will say one of the biggest wins for this year is our ASCBC expansion, which is our student government. Yeah. And Jason, a couple of years ago, we probably only had 10 schools with really robust. Just 10? Yeah, student councils. I mean, you know, yeah. they were on and off. And now, um, over 100, we sent young people, a full Baltimore City delegation, <laughs> yeah. to the state conference, and our young people are getting it done. I love it. Tell me this, uh, you know that City College is in my blood, also have <laughs> some family with the poly as well. Yes. But what they have in common right now, they need new buildings. That's I mean, right. They've been around for a bit. That's this right. is tough right now because not only is it renovations, but it's also repositioning students. How's that going and how tough of a process has this been? Uh, well, you know, it is always a tough process, but Baltimore City stands out in that we have built more new schools in a short period of time, probably than any other um, school district in the country. And we're proud of that. It is challenging. We are thrilled that our legislature um, has enabled us to be able to renovate these mm -hmm. very historic high schools. But as you noted, Jason, they're large high schools right. um, and including Douglas High School, right? right? So um, we're really excited that our city college students will have the opportunity to take advantage of the UB campus. Shout out to President Kurt Schmoke, yeah. you know, city alum. 
um, and city leader who really saw this opportunity for them, but also we're doing probably $24 million worth of renovation to the swing space for Polly and Douglas yeah. so that our young people during what is a transition will have um, solid high school space for this transition until they go back into new buildings. Now, will this all happen at the same time? Will all four schools be dealing with this at once oh, or is this one school at a time? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. and, and our operations team, um, our chief of staff, they do a fabulous job in the timing. Okay. So um, we'll have, I think Douglas goes first, okay. um, and then City will go, and then uh, Polly will go last. So we have now a rotation and experience in making sure that we time this right. So we still have another probably four or five years okay. until it's all until all three schools are done. Walk me through the summer. You guys do a good job of making sure students stay fed during the summertime, but also yes. bridging sort of that summer slide for them. What's in store for this this summer? So we are really excited. We have over 80 schools um, who are sponsoring their own school based summer programming okay. for our families so that young people will get continuity. We are partnering again, a fabulous partnership um, with um, our city uh, summer school uh, partners, as well as the mayor, um, the Office of Rec and Parks, uh, Mayor's Office of Families and Children, to really have a whole city effort. Okay. At city schools, we're thrilled. We had 19,000 students last wow. year, a record for us. Over the summer? Over the summer, wow. uh, uh, participating in city yeah. schools activities. So it's a real whole city effort, okay. but we are excited because we had more young people getting credits. We have a summer graduation, yeah. so that's contributing to more post-secondary opportunities. And one of my favorites, that I like to talk about is um, some of the new programming. One of my favorites is Black Girls Cook. Uh, uh, nice. My husband is very excited uh, for me to, <laughs> to visit that program, sure. but we've got a lot of new opportunities for families to check out. Got 30 seconds left. If yeah. there is a goal for next school year, yes. what, what's that for that contract year for you? Oh my goodness, the goal is to continue the upwards trajectory on just about every indicator. We are seeing our young people having fuller schooling experiences, yeah. more support, greater achievement, and, and we just, I want that to continue. Thanks.